Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video and welcome to the episode number 48 of the series of tutorial on how to build a premium theme for WordPress. Welcome again. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look on how to continue the coding of our right sidebar. So right now we have the sidebar just here on top, perfectly aligned to the right uh, in a fixed position. Now what we have to do, we have to create a couple of custom code in order to hide and dynamically reveal the sidebar every time we click on some specific button. So let's take care of that. First, let's access our code editor and let's access our header.php file where we created the sidebar and we're going to have the sidebar only in this file. If we access our design file, we'll notice that we have here our closing button on the top left of the bar. So let's do that. First, let's create another container inside a div that is going to have a class of sunset hyphen sidebar hyphen container. Let's close it and let's wrap this container around everything. So also the sidebar scroll container is going to be inside the sunset sidebar container. Container. And of course, because now we have a bunch of div indentations, we don't want to get confused. Let's use some comments to properly define all the divs that we created. Now in the CSS, we are going to copy this class, let's access our sunset.scss, we scroll all the way to the bottom where we started our section about the sidebar and here we can write the class sunset sidebar container, we are gonna give to this container a position relative, a display block and a width of 100% and a height of 100 VH as well. So if we go take a look in our front end, we refresh, of course, nothing has changed. But if we inspect the element, we should check that our sunset sidebar container, it's all around or it's inside our sunset sidebar and has the same height of our viewport. Now with this container with a position relative, we can put all the elements that we want in an absolute position. Without this container with a relative position, an absolute position inside the sidebar that it's fixed wouldn't be aligned to the sidebar itself, it would be all over the place of our page. We don't want that, we don't want to maintain all the elements properly inside the sidebar. So now with this container that it's wrapping everything, we can create our closing icon. So let's create an A tag, so it's going to be a button, it's going to be clickable by default every browser. Let's avoid completely the href tag because we don't want to link this to anything. Let's give it a class of JS close sidebar. And I know that I never use something like that, but this is a convention that I started to use recently at work and I noticed that it's really helpful. Basically, every time I have a class that triggers a JavaScript function, I'm going to write it in a completely different way of a class that just gives a CSS attribute or styles the uh, container where the class is applied to. So if this class triggers a JavaScript action, I'm going to call all these classes, all these type of classes with the JS prepend hyphen and then the name of the class with upper cases. So it's going to be completely different for all the other classes that I usually never use an uppercase and I just use a hyphen to separate the words. Plus we're going to have the JS. So it's going to be pretty obvious that this class triggers a JavaScript action. Here I want to give it another class that is going to be sidebar hyphen close. So I'm going to use this class to style the location of this button and this class to trigger the JavaScript action. Always keep the classes separated and never use a class to trigger a JavaScript action that has a style applied to it. Let's close the A tag and inside here we are going to create our span class with sunset hyphen icon and then sunset hyphen menu. If I remember properly, we're going to take a look if it works right now. Let's go back here. Let's refresh. This is the menu. So 
this is the opening tag we don't want that but we want should be close sunset hyphen close yes correct we have the um closing icons that you cannot properly see probably because it's really it's black on a dark background but we're gonna take care of the styling right now so let's copy these sidebar close let's go back here and as you notice i'm not indenting stuff inside because I'm not sure if I'm gonna use these classes again to declare to be reusable in other sections so I don't want to force myself to follow a specific indentation but of course if you feel more comfortable in SAS to have this type of indentation you can totally put the sidebar close inside the sunset sidebar container or having the structure that you prefer the thing that makes you more comfortable so this is gonna have a position absolute and it's gonna be on top at 10 pixels and on left other 10 pixels then it's gonna have a white color then it's gonna have a um, cursor pointer let's go back here let's refresh and now we have this icon that it's here as you can see because we have the position absolute all the other elements are getting pushed on top what we have to do we have to create a little bit of space right now here our first widget should start a little bit further down we have to have a margin top or a padding top for this widget in order to not go on top of these absolute icons that we're gonna have here so Let's do that by styling simply the sunset sidebar container by giving it a padding top of 40 pixel or something like that. Let's refresh. Perfect. We have enough space. And now we have our icon. We should change the rollover effect because of course it doesn't really work. And the rollover effect that I want to use is the same color that we had. In our case, we have dark gray, light gray, lighter gray. We define a specific unique color in the body where we have our links. And this is the color that we choose. These are sort of like color hover and the default color for the links. Let's copy this color and let's put it as a variable here. And let's call it simply orange. Declare this and then let's use orange hyphen hover and let's declare these other colors. So now I have these two colors properly declared and I can reuse this variable. So let's use the orange here and orange, oops, oh, orange hover and then let's have. The same here and hover percent focus we're gonna have a color of orange hover and let's see if it's not too dark it's not too hard to read no it's pretty good actually I kind of like it so that's perfect now we have to apply a specific JavaScript function every time we click on this X this sidebar has to slide and disappear from my view and go completely off to the right so let's do that first what I'm gonna do I'm gonna apply a specific transition to the sunset sidebar container that is the one that I'm gonna use to uh, slide from left to right and make it disappear so I'm gonna call a mixin that I already have and already declare multiple times to animate whatever attributes I want to uh, animate. In my case, I want to animate the transform CSS attribute with a speed of 320 milliseconds as usual. So now I can apply whatever type of transition or transformation to the sidebar and I'm gonna have an animation of 320 milliseconds. Here I want to declare a specific class because if this sidebar has the class sidebar hyphen closed, this sidebar has to have a transform of translate 
x, we're going to translate only the x value, so only the horizontal value of 100%. So we're going to push these x to the right of its 100%. So the entire width of the uh, sidebar is going to be transitioned to the right. And just as a test, be before doing all our JavaScript function, let's refresh these and let's see if we have, I think we have an issue here. I forgot to put animate. That is the name of the mixin. So if I save, now should work. Absolutely, yes, the compiling of the SAS went properly. So let's access again the front end. Perfect. Now, if we want to test it, let's access the sunset sidebar and let's close sidebar hyphen closed. Perfect. Did you see the transition? If I dynamically remove the class and reapply the class, that's what's going to happen. Basically, we're adding and removing the class. And that's everything that our JavaScript has to do. We are not going to do an animation with JavaScript because animating with JavaScript is heavier than animating a transform transition attribute in CSS. So we're going to take care of just swapping classes with JavaScript and it's going to be way easier to maintain. Let's access our JS folder and the sunset.js file. So let's copy this stuff because we already have a class declaration here and let's use this for the sidebar function. So on click, let's remove this, on click and to detect what we want to click is going to be JS hyphen sidebar close, uh, it was something like that, I don't remember anymore, like close sidebar, it was the opposite, but it doesn't matter, close sidebar. So on click, we're gonna detect the sidebar that is sunset hyphen sidebar, and we're gonna simply add a class with jQuery of sidebar hyphen closed. That's it save it let's go back in our front end let's refresh and now if we click nothing's happening because did we declare the proper yes i didn't write it properly so it's sunset sidebar <laughs> sorry about that let's refresh let's click and now the sidebar disappeared because dynamically jquery applied the class the sidebar close class to our sunset sidebar now we have to do the opposite we have to add the menu the icon the menu icon here and when we click it we're gonna remove the sidebar closed class from our sunset sidebar so let's do that let's access the header again and here inside the header container let's copy actually because we are super lazy let's copy the declaration that we had before of the sunset close and let's paste it right inside the header container but let's change a bunch of things. So instead of close sidebar, we're gonna have the JavaScript action open sidebar. And this is gonna be sidebar open CSS class. And this one is sunset menu. So sidebar open, let's copy, let's declare a class and let's declare a bunch of variable as well. So I want pretty much everything of this, but I don't want the rollover effect for now. I want to check how the rollover effect, the default one is gonna look on that background. Plus instead of left 10 pixels, I want the right to be 10 pixels because I want these menu, the sidebar open completely attached to the right. Let's save it. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh. Let's close this stuff. And now we have our icon that is identical to the icon of Firefox. So that's probably going to be a little bit confusing for, uh, for our users, but not really. I think it's fine. I don't really like these rollover effects. So let's apply this entire class here. So we're doing pretty much exactly the same of the sidebar close. So what we can do to save a little bit of writing and coding, let's declare the same classes here. Let's maintain the sidebar open and let's just simply change a bunch of attributes. The first is left, it's going to be auto, and then the right is going to be 10 pixels. Save it, let's refresh, let's close the sidebar, it's getting annoyed, 
and that's it. We have our icon. So you notice we have a bit of a problem here. If the scrollable bar is going to appear, especially on Mac, it's on hover, it's on top. So maybe we should increase a little bit, maybe 20 pixels and 20 pixels to avoid to have this little issue here with our pointer. So let's do that by replacing right and top 20 pixels. And maybe we should decrease a little bit the font size of uh, 16 pixels as well. Let's see how it looks. Whoa, 16 pixels is a lot bigger than I was expecting. So let's check here how so let's go 10. Let's go 10 pixels. I really like it. It's small, it's nice and clean. Yes, 10 pixels. And there you go. That's perfect. I like it. It's not creating issue with the sidebar. I can still click it. Now we have to do the JavaScript function that it's pretty identical to the other one. So now we have something. So we could potentially write this. Instead of close sidebar, we can potentially write just open sidebar and then uh, um, remove the class, remove the class sidebar close. So now we have everything that works because this button clicked will apply the class sidebar closed and this button clicked will remove the class sidebar close. So with these two different clicks, we are handling the same class swapping. And we can compact these two declaration in just one by using a class toggle. So let's take a look on how to do it. First, let's comment this stuff. Let's copy one declaration and let's put it here. And here we're gonna have a class, generic class called toggle sidebar. And here we're going to have the same exact function. So on click of the JS toggle sidebar class, we're going to check the sunset sidebar and we're going to instead of add or removing the class, we're going to toggle the class sidebar closed. So this toggle class function of jQuery automatically detects if this element already has this class or not. In case as this class is going to remove it, in case doesn't have this class, it's going to add it for us. So we don't have to have two different functions. We just want this system is going to do everything automatic for us. The only thing we have to do, we have to replace the open sidebar and close sidebar with the toggle sidebar class. So let's do that. JS toggle sidebar and JS toggle sidebar. Save it. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh. If we close, it's going to be closed. If we click, it's going to open it. Now, the only thing we have to do, we have to give this sidebar the default class, sun, oh, sorry, the default class sidebar hyphen closed. So by default, whenever we open our site, I refresh the site a couple of times, the sidebar is closed by default and we can open it and close it automatically whenever we want. And this is amazing. So as you can see, this is super smooth, super easy, super responsive, and it's pretty easy to maintain. We achieved everything We just one single JavaScript declaration, we can remove all these uh, actions that we don't need. And plus we define really short type of styling, especially to animate the sidebar, we just use the transform option and the translate X to move it. So always, as I suggest, when we have to animate something, always have the element in the position that naturally is at the end of animation. Never start with this element already hidden to the right because it's really complicated to slide it in of the correct location. It's always better having the element at the end of the animation and then reverse the animation and manage everything with CSS. So it's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoy. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And if you want, you can spend a couple of minutes to check the support me page on my website where you can find all different methods and ways to support me, support my channel and help me to do better videos and better tutorials for you. Thank you again, guys. And until the next lesson, as usual, happy coding.